are welcome to Olivet Bible Church, right in the Inspiration Center. Hallelujah. I need to see someone excited in the house this morning. We are so grateful to God who has been with us all through the pandemic. God who has seen us through and brought us back into this auditorium intact with our family members complete, with our businesses complete, with our jobs and careers complete, above all with our health complete. Why don't you just put your hands together for this God, this almighty God. Father, we give you glory. And so this morning we'll be having service, we'll be having worship, we are going to worship God, we are going to rejoice. And for those of you who will be joining us in our different online channels, we encourage you to be with us, enjoy God's presence with us. And as always, God's presence in Olivet Bible Church is the same. That presence will bless you, that presence will increase you, and will fulfill God's purpose in your life in the name of Jesus. This morning we want to pray as we go into the service. We're going to be thanking God. God brought us this far by His grace. I want to appreciate this great God. Can we be upstanding now? Let's just thank Him. Just pray your thanksgiving. Just pray your thanksgiving. And then we welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome His presence. Thank Him. Say, Father, I thank You. Who has brought me to worship you in this auditorium who has kept us through this period whose grace has shielded us whose mercy has kept us just lift up your hands and worship him say father thank you thank him for your family thank him for the, the works of your hands Thank him for your loved ones. God did not allow us to receive any bad news as touching our loved ones. He said, and you shall be saved together with members of your household. That word is being fulfilled in our midst. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way even as we worship our true and only living God today. Have your way in our midst. Prevail in every life. Fulfill your purpose today. And may your name be glorified forevermore. And the saints shall shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. While we remain here, remember to maintain all the safety protocols. Our seats have been arranged to maintain good social distance. Maintain those distances. No handshaking. No hugging. Rejoice. Praise and worship God and his presence will do you good in the name of Jesus. Shame the devil as the spirit of the Lord is upon my heart. I will dance like the oh, let us dance. Hey, hey, Come on, everybody, everybody, give the Lord in praise it deserves. Dance and shake your body, just give another spirit of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah! Oh, let us dance. Come on, give the Lord a dance off with this morning. Tell him how, how, how grateful you are for his love, for his preservation, for his protection, for his provision. If the Lord our God hasn't been on our side, hey, 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 would have been history. But God forbid, we are the testimony of the world. We are the testimony, we are the reason why, why Jesus rules and reigns. Hallelujah. We are the glory of the Lord. We are the light of the world. Oh, let us dance. Everybody, everybody, hey, oh, Jesus. 
the Lord. Give him praise for what he's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. <laughs> oh, glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. <laughs> Sing glory. Hey. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. For all that you have done. Hey. Oh. Come on, everybody. One more time. Sing it again. Glory, glory, love. We give you glory, love. What a victory! Glory, glory, love. You are. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Hey, he is the mighty, mighty, mighty God. You are the mighty, mighty, mighty God. No one like you, the mighty, mighty, mighty God. Oh, you're the mighty, mighty, mighty God. Oh, you're the mighty, mighty, mighty God. No one but you, the mighty God. Oh, mighty, mighty, mighty God. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Oh, the King of Kings, mighty God. Oh, I am that I am mighty God. The great healer, mighty God. Oh, mighty, mighty, mighty God. Everybody, oh, mighty, mighty, mighty God. You alone the mighty God. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a dance up for this morning. Don't hold back your pace. Don't hold back your dance. Hey, shake your body. Left body. To the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. Hey. Hallelujah. All of it, can we shout hallelujah? One more time to the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands as we worship God this morning. Oh God, we well, thank you. Thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for giving us this day. We don't take it lightly. We well, thank you. We we'll see your mighty hand at work in our lives. Thank you for our families. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. <laughs> we can't buy it. We can't buy it. Even if we are to buy it, who will supply, supply the money for it, if not for you? You are a source. You are a healer. You are a keeper. 
and all power belongs to you in heaven and on earth, oh God. All power belongs to you. Hey, who is it that say that it comes to pass if you haven't spoken? You are the one, you're the determinant of our lives. <laughs> hey, hey, your word is yea and amen. Your word is yea and amen. You, it's you that has the final say. It's you that have the final say over our lives, over our country, over our church, over our place of worship. Jesus, hey! Come on, lift your hands and worship God this morning. Don't, 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 hold, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Express your gratitude unto the Most High God this morning. He alone deserves the lifting up of our hands. He alone deserves true worship this morning. Our power belongs to you alone. The soul power belongs to you. Alone. Sing all power belongs to you alone. All power belongs to you alone. Sing all power in heaven and the earth. Oh, you alone, oh God, you alone, oh God. Power to heal, power to make, power to bless, power to live. Sing, oh, power! Hey! Oh, it belongs to you, God. Oh, it belongs to you. We ascribe greatness to your name, oh God. Sing, oh, power! In heaven and the earth. No comparison, no comparison. Single power. Hey. Power to heal. Power to save. Power to deliver. Hey. We ascribe greatness to your name, oh God. Single power. Jesus, oh power. Oh. Twice we have heard that all power belongs to you alone. And when you have spoken, surely comes to pass all power belongs hey, to you. Sing Transform power to heal, power to bless, power to enlighten, power to enliven. Oh God, <laughs> you alone, you alone owns the power. Oh power, oh power, oh power, oh power. Need a bag of hush and a heart. Come and lift your hands and worship God this morning. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him that you acknowledge his greatness, his, his might, his love, his peace. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his mercies. It's never by the power of any man. He that walk at the north spoke to will. Remember your identity in Christ. Remember your identity in Christ. Let's quickly go to Psalm 49, 20. A man who is in honor 
yet does not understand is like the beast that perish. Job 22, 29. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. And finally, for now, 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation. Remember, we are talking about your identity in Christ. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Your identity is one of the things that separates you from every other person. Your identity. When someone enlists in the army, the first thing they do is to give the person an identity, a uniform, and just to separate that person. So that when that person comes out, you know, in full regalia, you know that person is in the army. God has enlisted us in his army, and that's part of our identity. The situation that we are in now requires that we understand our identity. So that we do not expect things to happen to us the way it's happening everywhere. We should expect that God will deal with us in a different way. Because we are called by his name. All over the Bible, all through the Bible, you see where it's because of my name. For my name's sake. If people know that you are called by the name of God, if you've associated yourself with God, if they know that your identity is sourced in God, they won't even expect you to end up the same way. They will expect different things. And father, our Father in heaven is committed to that expectation. Praise the Lord. And as a believer, first thing you must have is that understanding, a deep understanding of who you are. A deep understanding of that identity. It's not enough to just say, I am born again. What does it mean? How does that separate you? What happens in your heart when you say, I belong to Christ? I identify with Jesus, the death and resurrection of Christ. What does it mean to you? How does it impact you? How does it determine what outcomes you have in life? Because it's the difference maker. Your identity is the difference maker. Praise the Lord. You know, someone wrote uh, a book and said that attitude is a different. Yes, attitude makes a difference. But your primary, the, the primary difference is who you are in Christ. What is your identity? Do you understand what that identity implies? Do you understand the benefits that are available to you by that identity? Do you walk in strong knowledge of what God has made available to you? Otherwise, like we read, if you do not know, like we read in Psalm 49, 20, you are going to be in honor. You will not know that you are in honor. You will walk like mere people, people that are forgotten and perish like the beasts. God forbid, praise the Lord. That is not our portion. We will walk in the knowledge of who we are. We will recognize that we are in honor. That God has placed us in a position of honor and we will not perish like the beast. Praise the Lord. This time, we have been slowed down all over the world. It's an opportunity for us to deepen our understanding of who we are. Our understanding of our purpose on this earth. Because your purpose is con connected to your identity. What you do cannot be separated from who you are. So take time now to find out what is it. What is that part of God's work that has been thrust into my hand? What is my identity? How does God see me? What does God say when he looks upon me? You know, what you say must align with what God says for you to have the results you have. Align your language to meet with that God. Because God will always address you according to your identity. The way he identifies you. That's how he is going to address you. And your spoken words must align with that. If you are to walk in that identity that God has given you. Knowing who you are will help you in every situation. 
it will help you in every situation. When people are saying there's a casting down, you are saying there's a lifting up. You are saying there are opportunities that God has opened, set a door for me, open doors for me, that there are opportunities. When people are crying, you are shouting praises, not because you have seen, but you know in whom you have believed. You know that God who has called you, who has brought you thus far, will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the identity. That's what should come out of your man. If God, in Romans 8, 30, he said that God who did not spare Jesus, he did not spare Jesus, but gave him up for us, to die for her. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Those things are source in the person that we are. We have become. The identity that we are, we have now. We carry an ID card. If, if it was possible for us to see the, our ID card in the spirit, the Lord's chosen, the one that Jesus died for, the one that Jesus has come to bring abundance to, the one that has been taken to the latter and greater glory. The one that God fights his or her battles. The one that God will never leave nor forsake him. That's our identity. That's our, who we are now. So you must walk in that consciousness. If you are bold enough to receive that um, knowledge, to understand it, to deepen your knowledge, you will see that there will be changes. So what does it mean? To identify with Christ. You have the power and authority to speak a thing and it shall be. Even as you have spoken. Because that's the identity. That's the power that God has bestowed upon his people. You shall see the results in righteousness when you speak. When you speak and you believe. That's where we are with Christ. It means that we have the power to live a holy life and, live and reject a life of sin. We cannot be identified with Christ and identified with the devil at the same time. It can work. Praise the Lord. If you identify with Christ, there must be a holiness that must be associated with your life. You are God's representative on this planet. You are God's representative on this plan. That's your plan. So walk like you are representing a great God. Walk like you are being backed by the greatest power on this planet. Walk like you are supported by the greatest abundance of resources upon this earth. Walk if it doesn't happen in your mind first, it will be difficult for you to see it in the face. Let it happen in your mind and you see it. Praise the Lord for God cannot lie. He has spoken it and it shall be so. Another thing it means you don't panic when others are panicking because you know that God has you. You don't panic. You don't run from pillar to post. God has you. He will come true for you. God can save thousands because of one child involved in a situation. God can save one person because of one child involved in a situation. So you must know who you are. This time, draw closer to God. Draw closer to God. When you identify with Christ, it brings about separation from things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You know, as I was um, reading this, um, as I was going through this, uh, just as I finished this message, can, can you give me the declaration? The one, as I conclude. So I want us to read it again. Thank you. To go through it again. This is my conclusion. You know, it was now that I just noticed that day one talks about identity. Declaration, day one, identity. <laughs> that's the title. Identity talks about, that's the focus of day one declaration. So as I round off this message, may we repeat this declaration again. Now I am a child of God. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. As Christ is, so I am in this world. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I'm a city set on a hill. I cannot be hidden. I am an overcomer. 
I walk by faith. I walk in love. I am a son, a daughter of God. And stand by this declaration as you understand your identity in Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Pastor Joy, for that timely word. Further to that, let's look at Psalms 46. You, you would think both of us prepared together. <laughs> That's what happens when the Spirit of God is walking as one. Hallelujah. Psalms 46. I'll be reading from uh, verse 1. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will I not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, cellar. There's a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Somebody say amen. amen. She shall not be moved. Say amen. amen. God shall help her. Say amen. amen. And that right early in the name of Jesus. The hidden rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Hallelujah. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to seize up unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Somebody shout hallelujah. The God of Jacob is our refuge seller pause and think hallelujah i'm speaking with us briefly on knowing god as our refuge if you look at this psalm closely you will observe that it's possible this psalm may have been written in a time of crisis in a time of trouble although this is not the only psalms in the bible that has uh, this kind of background from the rendering of, of all of them, you, 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 can, you can deduce the, the environment under which they were written. This is one of such psalms. But one thing peculiar about this psalm is that, uh, uh, different from other psalms of this nature that were written in a time of crisis, this one started by um, highlighting the, the, the greatness of God. It started by um, making us understand the... Uh, uh, willingness and availability of God to help us. The, the protection of God, the in, in, impeccable protection of God. It started by saying, God is our refuge, as in, uh, uh, compared to other uh, Psalms of that nature, where the predicament and the crisis of the Psalmist would have, would have um, um, commenced or would have started the Psalm. This one started by unveiling or bringing us to the consciousness of the greatness of God, of his almightiness, of his availability. He calls him ever-present help. It's one thing to have help. It's one thing for the help to be accessible. God is saying, I am the help you can assess, even in trouble. So this psalm is bringing us to the consciousness of the nearness of God when we are in crisis, as, as we are in the world now. The pandemic has created a kind of crisis that has, uh, that has seemingly overwhelmed the, 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 the wisdom of man. And so there is crisis everywhere. But God is saying that I am your refuge. Refuge means a hiding place, a place of succor, a place of protection, a place where there is no need to fear. If you look at verse 2, it says, from verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. The next thing that follows, he said, therefore, therefore, will not we fear? And he began to, he began to, um, he began to 
uh, um, remind us of all the calamities that our world have known, including the ones that we have not known yet. He talked about, he said, even if the world be removed, even if the earth be removed, the earth has not been removed yet. And that means that coronavirus is not the worst crisis to befall our planet. He says, even if the earth be removed, our earth has not been removed yet. He said, if, even if it will come to that point, he says, I will not fear. Why? Because I know. Because I know him as, as my refuge. Praise the Lord. Every man or every creature on earth has a place of refuge. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 26, the Bible talks about the wood badger. The Bible called them feeble folk, feeble people, or feeble species. Yet they make their hiding place or their nest in the rock. That's God's design for them. That's where God has designed for them to find their refuge. For man, God's design for your refuge is in him. Is in him. Is in his presence. Among the creatures on earth, on earth, man is the only one that when he's troubled, he begins to search for refuge in a wrong, in a wrong source. You are chasing a, 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 a rabbit, for those of you who have done some village hunting, you are chasing a rabbit, a rabbit, the rabbit will take off. Where is he running to? To its burrow. That's his refuge, hiding place. You chase a, a lizard, it, it will look for a tree. Because once it gets a tree, you ain't going to get it anymore. Hallelujah. But man, most of us, when we are troubled, we look for human connections. We, we, we fall back to our intellects. We look for the wrong sources. God is saying, know me as your refuge. Know me as a place of hiding. Know me as your place of protection. Impregnable protection. Impeccable protection. There is no amount of uh, attack that can protect or that can prevail against the kind of protection God brings. And in this season, it will do us a lot of good to know God from this sense. In the things of the spirit, knowledge is vital. What makes a difference is what you know. That's what matters. That's why the Bible says, Hosea 4, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not for lack of prayer, not for lack of fasting, not for lack of coming to church, but for lack of knowledge. In spiritual things, what you know matters and how you apply the things that you know. Knowing is not enough. Know and apply it in the right direction. Hosea 11.3, the Bible uh, said something about that, talking about the Ephraim. He said, I taught Ephraim to go taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I have healed them. So knowledge is important. In this scripture where we read, uh, Psalms 46 verse 10, the Bible begins to say, it says, be still and know. Be still and know. That's what the psalmist in this scripture has been driving us to. The need for us to know him as our refuge. He said, be still and know that I am God. I believe he was speaking from the mouth of God himself. God was speaking through the psalmist here. He said, be still and know that I am God. Being still does not imply that you pray no longer anymore. It does not imply that you do not walk anymore. It means that you should submit to him. Stop opposing him. When we run to the wrong source for protection, we are opposing God. We are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are limiting the working out of God's grace in our lives. When you, when you depend, when you resort to the wrong sources for refuge, for your protection, you are limiting the hands of God from working for you. So in times like this, it will do us a lot of good that we know God for ourselves. We have a personal, experiential knowledge of God. Have a personal knowledge of God. Not knowing God by what the pastor says alone. Know God by who he is to you. Know God by who he is to you. As God was revealing himself to his different uh, prophets in the Bible, they were coming up with different names. Abraham had to know him as Jehovah El Shaddai. The, uh, God that provides. God our provider. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in the area of knowledge, in the area of knowing 
uh, about God. Uh, three vital areas are important. Let me just mention it to you quickly. Know who you are in God. It's very important. Know who you are in Him. Know who you are in Him. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we might show forth the praise of Him who has called us uh, out, of light, out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let's know Him. Let's know who we are in Him. And then let's know who we have or what we have in him. Let's know what we have in him. Um, Colossians 1.27, Paul speaking, he told the Colossian church, he told them, he said, he said, uh, he said uh, uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have Christ in you. And therefore, there's a hope of glory. Glory means victory. Glory means victory. It means uh, a prevailing. So we will prevail in the name of Jesus. We will come out of this situation victoriously in the name of Jesus. Finally, know the God you have. He's our God of refuge. If the Lord be with us, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Come with this understanding, and no fear that sweeps the land will overcome you in the name of Jesus. When men are cast down, you will look up and say, there's a lifting up. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for the great things you have done in our lives and in our midst. And may your name be praised forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. To continue, it's my uh, privilege and honor to welcome our, our mom in the house, Pastor Ngozi. Welcome. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. I will read just one verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible said... I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Some weeks back in our online service, Pastor preached a message entitled, Repair the Broken Altars. And then thinking of what to talk to us this morning, it occurred to me that some have not even built an altar before. When you don't have an altar, what are you repairing? You don't even have an altar. You've not sacrificed anything for God. You've not laid down anything for your salvation, anything for your relationship with God. Nothing has been laid down for God. We know a lot of saints of old that built altars. Abraham built an altar and God um, substituted the ram for Isaac. Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my victorious banner. Joshua built an altar after the defeat of Ai. David built an altar and a plague stopped. And Elijah built an altar repaired broken down altar and called down fire from heaven the altar is a place of worship and sacrifice it is a place of memorial a place of remembrance the altar is a place of death you die to some things and some things have to die the altar is a place of reality no more pretense the altar is a place of truth. No more telling lies. No more living a lie. If you're a Christian, be a Christian in church, outside the church. If you are a backsliding Christian, be backsliding so that somebody can return you back to God. If you are an unbeliever, be an unbeliever so that somebody can preach to you and preach salvation message to you. No more living double life. Double life is a lie. The altar is a place of truth. Lay your life on the altar. Praise the Lord. In the New, New Testament where we read, the Bible says that we are the Christian life. We are living sacrifice placed on the altar for God. Our lives are living sacrifices. God is not expecting us to kill goat and ram any longer. It is us that are the sacrifice. But on which altar are you laying your life? Where is that living sacrifice? Where are you placing that living sacrifice? Where are you placing yourself 
as a living sacrifice when you have not even built an altar. In the midst of the pandemic, God has been gracious to us. God has kept us. He has been us health, even in good health. He has provided. Hunger did not kill any one of us. Lack did not kill us. We are still around. When it was like your back is on the wall, you suddenly found out it's a door and you escaped. God has kept us. Build him an altar. Praise the Lord. A sister told me how God sustained his, her family and is still sustaining her family. When it was like it's the last meal, somehow God made a way like that woman of Zarephath and her son that Elijah met. The oil and the flour didn't finish. When it was like your last meal, somehow, somehow, it, it continued, it continued to flow. A lot of us have lived the Bible this season, practically lived the Bible. When it was like the help is finished, you suddenly find out that there's a help for me. There's a help for my family. Build God that altar. Praise the name of Jesus. God has shown up and is still showing up on our behalf in Jesus' name. The flower will not finish, the oil will not finish in Jesus' name. Here we are, we can sing again, we can clap again, we can shout again, we can dance again. God is here for us. Today we are gathered again and none is missing. To God alone be all the glory. Build him an altar. Build that altar today and repair the broken down ones. Build God and altar the place of your sacrifice where you lay your life. Remember, it's your life that is a living sacrifice. Build him an altar of worship. Build him an altar of praise. Build God an altar of thanksgiving. Build that altar of prayer. Build an altar of Bible reading. Build that altar of evangelism. Build an altar of fellowship with the brethren as we are gathered here. Don't miss service for the rest of the year. Build him an altar of giving. Build God an altar of love. Love for man and love for God. Build God that altar. You can no longer be a casual Christian. If you didn't pick anything from the pandemic, pick the fact that you can no longer be casual in your faith. We can no longer be casual. You can no longer be a casual Christian. Whatever you do, whatever altar you choose, I may not have mentioned the altar you have to build. Whatever you are doing, whatever you have to do, whatever altar you have chosen, whatever altar is coming unto you, even at this time, go ahead and build that altar. As we leave this environment, as we leave these entrances today, as you go home, begin to build that altar. Don't leave it for any other day. Stop living a pretentious life. God does not like that. Build God that altar and begin to build it today. Don't wait until tomorrow. No man have all the time on earth. And no one is, control of, is in control of tomorrow. You are not in control of tomorrow. I am not in control of tomorrow. Only God is. If you have to build that altar, build it and build it today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, um, let me, in this, to conclude the messages for today, invite to the pulpit the pastor, our senior pastor, Pastor Owen Nlokowa. God bless you. Thank God for those messages. Each one of them has come with impact. Let's look at uh, Psalm 92. Psalm 92, from verse 12. Here the Bible says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. 
Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be He's my rock, and there is no righteousness in him. Okay. Then look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We read verse 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who, who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. All things, all things. Father, we cover every family here, every individual with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify this arena. Father, set it apart for a sacred use more than ever before. Anybody coming under the influence of this ministry, coming into our premises, comes under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Father, let the sick be healed, even right from the gates. Let the afflicted be delivered. Let the captives be set free. Let joy be released in the hearts of your people. Let your children receive hope. And everyone that is coming into this place receive hope. To your glory and honor, in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to tell us, you see, God plans us for a purpose. It's not an accident that we, we are where we are today. God plans us for a purpose. And he plants us wherever we are with a purpose in mind. We are planted to flourish. That word translated flourish, there means to be green. We are planted to bear fruit. To bear fruit. To show something for the effort of God in planting us. To have something to show for our being as designed by God. Walk in the consciousness that I am planted by God. I am a planting of the Lord. Walk in that consciousness. God planted me and taking root downwards and I'm bearing fruit upwards. When you're conscious that you're planted by God, you're the man sent by God in that location for that purpose, you will be very certain and confident that nobody can uproot you. Nobody can uproot you because God planted you and he planted you on purpose deliberately and he planted you for a purpose. Until that purpose is fulfilled, nobody can touch you. In Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's not that Hades or hell will not try, but Jesus, the founder and the builder of the church and the very foundation of the church has declared before building the church, before starting, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. During the lockdown, we say we are reopening churches. Churches, we are never closed. It just are coming together that was suspended. Churches, we are on in a, in a greater force. Oliver Bible Church was on in a bigger force. In a bigger dimension, we reached people we didn't reach before. I have calls from, from Trinidad and Tobago, from the US, from the UK, from Ghana, from Australia. Where else have we received calls from? From Canada. People that log into our messages. People that couldn't access what God is doing with us before have access to it and are having testimonies. During that lockdown, a family I pastored over 20 years ago, I wedded them briefly, shortly after wedding, they relocated. 
but I increased my online presence, increased my Facebook friendship, you know, confirming those that checking and confirming some until I built it over 1,000. So I became more visible on Facebook. There are still about 500 friendship requests. Sorry, no prayer requests, you see? This prayer thing. Okay. <laughs> Praying mantis. <laughs> you know, so, so the, that family, the wife got in touch with me. We've been out of touch for years. On Facebook, gave me the husband's number that they, 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 the husband would like to have my number. I sent it to them. When they called, we talked for long. Churches, we are not closed. We've had more impact. We only changed mode of oppression in response to the demands of government. Responsible demands anyway. In Hebrews 10, 25, the Bible says, not forsaking the gathering of ourselves together as is the habit of some. On a good day, there are some that don't take our gathering together serious. And the Bible says we should not be like them. God wants us to gather like we are gathered today. He wants us to meet, brethren to meet. Things happen when we meet. There is a message on that which I have heard. God commands us to gather together. And the Bible says that unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. Our gathering is unto the Lord. And things get to happen when we gather. Obeying God will always bring a blessing. Always. Obeying God will always bring a blessing. When we could not help it in gathering together like this, like during the lockdown, that's understandable. And God was still helping us as families, as individuals. God was there all the way for us. Hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 8. I read from verse 35 down. Who shall separate us from the love of God? The church is individuals. The, each individual believer is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Each individual believer is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The local body of Christ, like Oliver Bible Church, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the church universal is the temple of the Holy Spirit. At every unit, we carry that presence of God. At every level, we carry that presence of God. And there is nothing that will uproot the church until everything is consummated on earth. Stop panicking. There is nothing that will stop the church. Men have tried stopping the church over here. Nothing will stop the church. And so a virus will not stop the church. It's a creature. It will not. When God permits something, it's always for a purpose. So let's not even go that way now. We are reopening. So Romans 8 from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through he who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, COVID-19, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. In all of these things, in the face of this pandemic, we are more than conquerors. So as we resume, a lot of times in the Bible, when there was going to be a war and the children of Israel uh, were to undertake a fight with another nation, sometimes, like you see in Judges chapter 1, they will ask who will go first. 
And God will tell them that Judah should go first. I, at least you see it in two places or three in the Bible, Judah. Judah means praise. So as we resume, it will be appropriate we, that we come before this presence of God with thanksgiving in our hearts. Psalm 100 verse 4. Let's come before him with a heart of appreciation. I don't remember any one of us that caught this virus. I know a sister, one of us, the sister that lives in a, another state, caught it. And that one advanced to the stage. You know, at a certain stage, you can't taste anything. You can't smell anything. That time is going, is heading towards the lungs. It got there, but she still got healed. She got help. But here we are today, rejoicing. We came with our two legs. Nobody came in a stretcher. And nobody will go in a stretcher. Nobody will come back next time in a stretcher. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts with praise. We are thankful to him who has made it possible for churches to resume now. Since they can't even resume yet. Appreciate God for making our gathering possible. Why don't we lift our hands and say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for yourself. Father, I thank you that we are here today. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Yes, there is something the enemy... Look at Joel chapter 2, verse 20 and verse 21. The enemy is ravaging the earth with a virus. But... Joel chapter 2, verse 20. God is always ahead of the enemy. God, the devil is a creature. So the Bible says here, but I remove far from you. I remove far off from you the northern army. And we drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part towards the utmost sea. And his thing shall come up and his ill server shall come up because he has done great things. The new King James says he has done monstrous things. But God always has a response. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Somebody shout for joy. For the Lord has done marvelous things. The King James says, for the Lord will do great things. The Lord will do great things. So there is always a heavenly response to anything that Satan does that he thinks he's getting somewhere. One translation says he has done terrible things. But our Lord will do great things in righteousness. Now, certain things are sure. Certain things are sure. Number one, the love of God for us. We can always bank on it any day. Why don't you close your eyes and look up and say, God loves me. I'm not hearing somebody's voice. With your eyes closed, your face upward, say, God loves me. God loves me. That one is certain. Another thing that is certain is we will not worship a virus. Are you hearing me? We will not bow to the virus. And we will not submit to fear and give in to panic. Like the Nigerian will say, no shaking. Tell your neighbor, no shaking. God is on the throne. And it came to pass. This thing will pass like every other thing that has come to pass. And God is still on his throne. One thing that is certain, which the pastors have talked about, is the solace and refuge that God is to us. So as a matter of fact, it's to our advantage now that we have resumed services. Because the, the church of God is a house of mercy, it's a city of refuge. 
One thing that is certain is that we will dream fresh dreams. We will see new visions. And we, we take new steps of faith. Because life goes on and life goes well. We shall do greater works. So what do we do? Look up. Look up. Look up to God, our Father. Look up to Him. Remember where we started. Look up to Him on a daily basis for leading. Look up to Him for leading. Look up to Him for wisdom. Look up to Him for favor. Look up to Him for daily power, the anointing to carry on on a daily basis. You will see that these things we need them in this situation. And look up to him daily for provision. Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Part of that daily bread is the education of your children. Everything that works together to give you a profession, to put food on your table, Give us this day our daily bread. He's saying, make our businesses to work. Make our jobs to flourish. Give us this day our daily bread. So let us resume our corporate worship in a new spirit and in a new hope because God is on the throne. No shaking. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. Let's say, Father, I thank you for leading me on a daily basis. Thank you for giving me wisdom, for witty inventions. Thank you for giving me wisdom to handle every task of each day. Thank you for giving me wisdom in all my relationships, in the family, in my place of work, in the church. Thank you for giving me wisdom. Father, I thank you for giving me favor. Favor with you and favor with man. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm thanking for a new anointing. I'm praying and say, Father, anoint me afresh. Pray for a fresh anointing. We shall walk in his power. We need a higher level of anointing to be able to sell in all we are doing this season. We need a higher level of anointing, the power of God clothing us, resting upon us. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor and adoration. We give you honor and adoration. Father, the hope of your people will never die. Father, as we resume services today, I decree that every business that concerns us is kickstarted again in Jesus' name. I command life and activity and productivity to return to every business that concerns your people. Every area of our interest, Father, let them come alive again. Breathe upon our families. Breathe upon our businesses. Breathe upon our jobs. Breathe upon our ministries. Let everything start in full force to your glory and honor. Father, let the glory of the latter half of this year be greater than the first half. May we see more favor more results, more testimonies than what we have taught prior to this time. You are our light and our salvation. Who shall we fear? You are the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? Say with me, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes come upon me to attack my flesh. They will stumble and fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. Declare it. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. My family is covered with the blood of Jesus. Our loved ones are covered with the blood of Jesus. Olivet is covered with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our families are covered with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we claim favor with you. And favor with man. 
Let your favor make the difference for us. Thank you for the testimonies of the great and mighty things you're doing. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we've declared. In Jesus' name we've declared. May God give you presence of mind to know what he's doing per time and to follow in what he's doing. In the season ahead, I decree over your life, you will, you will run to keep pace with what God will be doing in your life. You will run to keep pace with what God is orchestrating on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus, your life picks a new fire. Your life picks a new fire. From Lift up your hand, lift up your hand. Father, let your hand touch these hands. From now on, anything you touch becomes productive and becomes fruitful, becomes fruitful, becomes fruitful. One era of our development is over. A new era has come. A more glorious era. A more fruitful season. A season of refreshing. Your anxious time is over. There will be no relapse of the situation. There will be no spike of the virus. Coronavirus will cause you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you show up in our state, in our nation, in our continent, all over the earth, wherever you show up, we cause you to die in Jesus' name. Father, those who are working on remedies to help people, give them divine wisdom. Open their eyes. Reveal what they ought to do to them. Reveal what is necessary to them. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we've prayed. Amen. Let's take our day seven declaration. Hallelujah. Say, I declare. Like you're declaring. God has forgiven all my sins. He has healed all my diseases. He has redeemed my life from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth with good things. So my youth is renewed like the eagles. My spirit is waxing strong. The Lord is my shepherd. And separated from poverty and lack. God makes all grace that bound toward me. So I always have all sufficiency in all things. And I have abundance for every good work. My family is blessed. Say it again. My family is blessed. Call your family blessed. Say it again. My family is blessed. Say it again. My family is blessed. I will ever be grateful to Almighty God. And I stand by my declaration. Amen. See more of you if you are around in Lagos. And if you are looking for a place of worship, we make bold to welcome you to Livet Bible Church. But if you have a place you are fellowshipping already, we encourage you to join hands with the people, people of God in that location, to build the kingdom of God and make it work. Please, if you have your offerings package, let's stand and let's pray. Our account details are displayed there. Do transfers. Pay through the online channel, see the account details, praise the Lord. And, uh, and for those that will be giving um, physically here, Father, we thank you for this opportunity for a corporate worship once again. Thank you for all you have done in our lives. Thank you for your hand that is mighty upon us. We have come to worship you today. And with these offerings, we thank you. We worship you. We ask that you have your way. Continue to carry us through this season, continue to see us through, continue to give us the victory in every front in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We declare abundance to our finances. We declare abundance in every area of our lives. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.